Welcome to the Sophistic Online Documentation. In this video of the Composite Bridge tutorial, we show how to carry out the design checks for composite cross sections in the serviceability limit state. Here we provide the following checks. Stress limitation in the rare combination, stress limitation in the permanent combination, minimum reinforcement for crack control, and Track control under direct loading. As you can see, I already prepared the corresponding text tasks for the checks. And first, we will start with the stress limitation in the rare combination. The stresses in structural steel, concrete, and reinforcement in the rare combination should be limited. The limit stress depends on the factors defined by the national annex. The recommendations from pure Eurocode are the Van Mises stress in structural steel should not exceed the characteristic yield strength. Compression stress in concrete should be limited to 60% of the characteristic compression strength. And for the reinforcements, to 80% of the characteristic yield strength. Okay, let's take a look at the input in module composite to get these checks. The structure is basically the same as explained in the previous video for the ultimate limit state checks. However, now we want a different check. Therefore, we have to set in the task definition that we want to check stress limits in the serviceability limit state and here that we would like to do the checks for the characteristic, respectively, rare combination. And of course, we need different design load cases. So now those should be proposed for the rare combination. So we choose here to get the design load cases of type rare and filter them to only get those superposed for max or min bending moment MY or shear force reset. If we have calculated the task, we can take a look at the report. Quite similar to the ultimate limit state check, we get a table that gives at each position along the design element for each material, the stress at the decisive position, the material strength, the additional factors for the check, and the utilizations. And then once again, we have an overview plot showing the utilizations. As you have seen in the input, we also have requested detailed information at the section in the span and at the inner support, where we get the information about constituting subload cases, the stress plots at the section, and the table where the decisive utilization occurs in the structural steel elements. And finally, you also have a table that shows the properties of the, individ of the individual concrete elements for tension stiffening. And that's a point that I would like to highlight here. In the stress calculation for the serviceability limit state checks, the tension stiffening effect is included by default. Okay, what is it about? in a reinforced concrete slab acting in tension. The concrete in between the cracks still takes part in transmitting the forces in the slab. So even if the slab is cracked, it is stiffer than the pure reinforcements of the slab. Stiffness attracts loads. Therefore, the forces and reinforcement stresses in the slab of a composite girder are higher than those calculated using the pure cracked composite section, where only the structural steel and reinforcement are active. Since equilibrium has to be fulfilled, this effect leads also to a reduction of stresses in the structural steel part of the section. In accordance with Eurocode 1994, module composite considers tension stiffening in the stress calculations for the serviceability checks, but not 
for the ultimate limit state design checks. We can check the effect of tension stiffening on the stresses by requesting an extreme output level at the detail. Then we get at the requested sections the full information about the stress development, respectively calculation. Now we will take a look at a section at the inner support for a load case where this section gets tension in the concrete slab, so cracks. Here, for example, I will take load case 3102. Now we can go to the construction history and the development of stresses in the section. So, okay, you can see how the stresses develop. And what I want to show you is the develop occurring here in the very last step of the calculation history, because this is where we take into account tension stiffening effect. So as you can see, and as expected, the tension stiffening effect leads to higher stresses in the reinforcements and a stress reduction in the structural steel parts. Note also that you can switch off the tension stiffening effect with the input command TS. For more information about the options provided there, please take a look at the command reference in the manual. Okay, next we will do the check for the stress limitation in the quasi permanent combination. This check is about limiting the compression stress in the concrete to make sure that we do not have to take care about nonlinear creep effects. The exact value for the stress limit depends on the national annex. Pew Eurocode recommends to limit the compression stress in the quasi permanent combination to 45% of the characteristic concrete compression strength. The input for this check is quite similar to the one for the stress limits in the rare combination. We only change the requested SLS check to permanent. And then of course we need the corresponding design load cases, which we get by setting the literal P for quasi permanent design load cases. And here we are only interested in max MY load cases because we are checking compression stress in the concrete in the report. Once again, you get a summary table of the checks along the design element. Here, of course, only the concrete is relevant. And you also get a plot of the utilization. OK, so much about the stress limitations. Now we will proceed with the control of cracking. For this topic, two checks are relevant. The first one is about sufficient minimum reinforcement to avoid wide individual cracks in the crack formation stage. And the second check, control of cracking due to direct loading, is about limiting the crack widths in the stabilized cracking stage. So let's have first a look at the minimum reinforcement. When the concrete cracks, then the stresses in the concrete that are set free have to be carried by the reinforcement. The reinforcement amount in the slab should be sufficient to limit the occurring reinforcement stress to a value that guarantees the crack width limit. According to Eurocode 4, this amount can be calculated by the effective tensile strength of the concrete times the area of the tensile zone divided by the limit stress. That depends on the selected crack width limit and the reinforcement bar diameter and some additional factors. We will take a look at the corresponding input in module composite. Now the selected task is min r for minimum reinforcement and at check we specify 
the crack with limit. Note here that we allow only 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 millimeters as input, which are the typical values also provided in Table 7.1 of Eurocode 4. The input of an arbitrary crack width limit is not supported. The minimum reinforcement needs only to be placed in areas where under the characteristic combination tensile stresses occur in the concrete. So this check should be run with design load cases superposed for the rare respectively characteristic combination. In our case, only the load cases superposed for minimum bending moment MY are of interest because in our present bridge system these will give the most tensile stresses in the concrete. So I will use this filter to only select these load cases and note that these load cases from the rare combination they have already been used to check the stress limitations in the rare combination previously. And because we do not want to overwrite the results calculated there, we store the results that will be calculated now under a different load case number. For this, you can specify an offset for the result load case number. Here I will use 10,000, for example, as offset. Okay, now let's run the task and take a look at the results. Short note. Now you can see that the, load, that the offset for the result load cases is applied and then the selected design load cases are different from the load cases where the results are stored. For the check, we once again provide an overview table along the design element for each thin walled concrete element. The necessary minimum reinforcement is calculated and compared to the existing reinforcement amount. Important point here that applies to all tasks and also to the stress calculation. Module Composite considers only the reinforcement defined in the cross-section editor or in module aqua. Reinforcements that might be defined or calculated with module AQB are not taken into account. Note also that where we have defined non-effective areas, so here at the abutment and for example also at the inner support, the thin walled elements are splitted, as you can also see in the cross-section plot, and therefore occur twice in the table with the reinforcement located in each part of the divided element. Okay, next, crack control due to direct loading. For a given reinforcement stress, the crack width limit can be either enforced by limiting the diameter of the reinforcement bars or by limiting the bar spacing. In module composite, both options are implemented. But, okay, first we will take a look at the input. For the task, we now write crack, and the crack width limit should be 0 0.2 millimeters. We want to do the check using the design load cases superposed for the frequent combination. And from these load cases, take only those superposed for min bending moment MY, because this will result in the maximum reinforcement stress. Okay, what do we get from this input? First, an overview table that sums up the limit diameter and spacing from table 7.1 and 7.2 of Eurocode 4 for the selected track width. And then for every section along the girder for each reinforcement element, 
in our case for the line reinforcement constituting the top and bottom reinforcement of the slab. Okay, here. Then for every of these elements, we get the maximum reinforcement stress. Please remember that these stresses have been calculated considering the tension stiffening effect. And then a comparison of the calculated limit diameter versus the existing diameter of the reinforcements. And the same for the bar spacing. So limit spacing and the available spacing. And if one of these two criteria is fulfilled, then the check is fulfilled. Okay, that's it about the serviceability limit state checks. In the next video, we will show you how to calculate shear forces for the design of the shear connection between structural steel and concrete.